What's up everybody, welcome to the Changeover Podcast. If this is your first time on the channel, this is a podcast about professional tennis where we just give you guys a behind the scenes about how we live our life on the Pro Tour. Um, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to our channel. And for today, we have today's guest is Stacey Fung. Stacey's a WTA player, ranked about 238 in the world. And we just went over stuff like a preseason recovery, told some stories like about Cancun and stuff. I know everybody likes to hear those ones. So yeah, it was a fun episode. Um, we were excited to, to shoot it and film it and hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. What's up guys, welcome to the Change Over Podcast. Um, before this video starts, please, um, if you enjoy what we've been doing here, um, feel free to like and subscribe. That will help us to continue to bring content to you guys. Um, without further ado, today we have a special guest, Stacey Fung. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Finally um, made it down to Boca. Yeah, how's preseason been going? It's been going well so far. Just finished my last day today before I actually head out for my first event of the year. Nice. So what's uh, what's the training been like? Like, is, Can you give us a little bit of a breakdown into how, how the week has been? So my training actually started about three weeks ago and it was back in Vancouver. So I did my first three weeks there and then came down here. So obviously it's nice to be playing outdoors in the sun and the heat sweated out um but i came down a little bit injured and so i kind of had to take it easy at the beginning so just mostly fitness rehab all of that and then progressed into more like situational like point play stuff like that so is that normally how you do your preseason training like is it structured in that way where you have a certain amount of fitness first before you lead into more tennis like as the competition starts yeah i would say definitely the first few weeks were heavy on the fitness side versus tennis and then now it's more of like two a day of a tennis session versus fitness but honestly this is kind of like my first preseason to start a year last year i think i was playing tournaments at this time and then came home for the holidays but um but yeah so first little preseason okay okay so today um I guess we should start about one of the current events in tennis. So we were discussing a few minutes ago about the highest paid female athletes in 2023. So on the list, we have Iga Swiatek is one, Eileen Gu two, Coco Gauff three, Radu Kanu is four, Naomi Osaka five, Sabalenka six, Pagula seven, Venus eight, Rybakina nine, and Leila Fernandez ten. So mm -hmm. it's eight out of ten? That is... Nine out of ten. Venus nine? Nine out of ten? Unless Forbes is wrong. It's not Forbes is never wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Eileen Goo was only the only Eileen one. Goo. Eileen Goo. Yeah. So <laughs> what <laughs> What I Go thought. Go card. She's, she, I think she's at Stanford. She is, yeah. 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 What I thought was interesting about this is that you wouldn't expect that 9 out of 10 of the highest female athletes um, are tennis players because like what Amy said previously, is the, it's not they're not marketed as such, right? So mm -hmm. um, what do you guys think about I guess how for your experience in the futures and 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 above how the marketing has been from your experience mm -hmm. well i think in that article it's based not only on prize money but also endorsements and i think that's a big thing in the tennis world is prize money obviously at the higher level it is substantially or substantially more but a lot of players do fund their career through outside sources yeah yeah yeah, that's true. Amy was saying before too that um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> and, uh, about her interview with Pliskova. Yeah, Pliskova did an interview saying like they asked her about like the difference between like Serena and Venus era. I mean, uh, Serena, Venus, and Sharapova era, okay. and like now and how they market the players. Okay. And she was saying that WTA marketed Sharapova and Serena so much better than their marketing players now. And like when I heard that, no comment. No, I was thinking about it. I was like, um, like initially, I thought of Coco Golf being the highest female, um, like highest paid female for the year, and it kind of snuck up, snuck up on me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like surprising, kind of, because it's not. You didn't hear about this all year long. You didn't see Coco's face everywhere on the WTA. So like. I don't know. That's I, and that's also kind of why it reminded me of why we do this. Is, I mean, we ended up marketing ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the process because now we have people who actually follow us and care about us. But the idea was to market. For example, today is to market you, you know, mm -hmm. so like to give you the stage and the platform to, for people to get to know you and that sort of stuff. So, I guess that's kind of what I what I thought about when when we heard this. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I didn't see the interview, but I don't know. I think with tennis nowadays, not at least on the female side, I don't know if it's necessarily like better or worse, but I just feel like it fluctuates a lot more. There's a lot of girls that are coming in and out of the top 10 versus maybe in that era. It was really just Sharapova, <laughs> Serena, yeah. Venus. Um, it was very consistently always kind of in the top five, top three, honestly. So I don't know if that's just a difference. Like you said, like people are just kind of making runs sometimes here and there. Like obviously Coco won US Open, which is unbelievable. But then besides that, it's kind of like, oh, who's going to win like the next slam? It's kind yeah. of always a bit up in the air, which is too bad just because it's it's nice to have players like consistently um, maybe that's just in the nature yeah. of the sport that's difficult to consistently push out the name for so long mm -hmm. but I mean I guess the difference is in the past when you had Serena and, and these people they win every week you know mm -hmm. like they win yeah. multiple slams a year like yeah. Fed, Djokovic, Nadal these guys win multiple slams a year so it's easier for them to market because you know when clay court season comes around Nadal is going to win a slam so then mm -hmm. that's why they can market him and his clothes and that sort of stuff so yeah maybe it's just the nature of the sport yeah Speaking of outfits, you had a story, you know, Justin? I do have a story. Seeing as you travel tomorrow, yeah. I was curious about maybe your airport do's and don'ts. Okay. Two <laughs> weeks ago, no, or maybe four weeks ago now, I was traveling to Bolivia. I get to Miami airport, I'm in the, I'm in a long line. And I see my buddy Noah Shakta at the, at the counter. He looks normal, he has a little tennis, his little backpack tennis racket sticking out. And he's walking. And he comes past me, and I notice that my friend is wearing tennis shorts in the airport, which is, for me, if you're not wearing sweats in the airport, something's wrong, because you don't want to be raw dog in the, air, the airplane seats. And <laughs> something's wrong with me all the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's, that's a no already. Then I look down, my boy's got on his Diodora socks, right? And his Diodora clay coat shoes tied. Like, oh, like, like he's please. about, <laughs> about to play a match. That. I said, yo, you good, dog? You just come from the courts? He said, he said, he said I'm grinding. He said, he, said, he said, I'm always ready. So I, I took, out a, took out a court and I flipped it. So we started playing tennis in the, in the airport lobby. But no, um, what is your yeah, do's and don'ts in the airport for, for dressing? I agree. I think sweats are a must. Mm. I think... Honestly, as well, hoodies, I think it's essential to be able to throw it up if you need to just pass mm. out, maybe have to tie it tight, uh -huh. block up the sun, you know. Um, big into matching sets, if you can match. Oh, so you, you style it for the airport? I what? think so. I mean, this, <laughs> this, this is a potential for tomorrow with a hoodie, you know. It's Are like, you match the, the sports bra with the, the I mean, I came matching the... for the bra. Oh, I see. No, okay. <laughs> I don't know what else you wanted. So. We, we, we couldn't tell. <laughs> I didn't know what the vibe was going to be, so I thought it was safe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would. I don't think I would ever go in shorts. I think I agree with that. Is and that also, like, socks cold? are a must. I see Overnight flight, by the way. We had a nine-hour flight. Nine-hour well, flight. And my long flights, I think you got to wear sweats. I don't think they're shorts. Overnight flight, my boy was in the Adidas shorts. <laughs> yeah, the, the, what do they call it? The five inch seam. You got his thighs out. It's too much. <laughs> and the, the, the Diodora is tight. Too I much. thought that was a bit crazy. But shout out to Noah though. Noah's uh, actually has been watching the podcast for a while. I don't know if he's watching this particular episode, but yeah, thanks to Noah because he's also given feedback and stuff and about things that he would like to see. So yeah, I appreciate Noah too, one time. So. For sure. And speaking of hoodies, you can buy some hoodies from us <laughs> if you go to the. Uh, so he's a businessman. <clears throat> relax, relax. The link relax. tree. Link the tree. link tree in our bio, and you go to the shop tab the link will be down below the shop tab and you can buy this pink hoodie another white hoodie a long sleeve dry fit and a regular dry fit so yeah get involved i just ordered mine it's coming in we should have we should have in the future some inventory for the guests so the guest has a little goodie bag cost money, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to make money <laughs> yeah true hey guys quick break Justin here from The Changeover. I'm gonna talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues with TSA. It's a big money saver, and you can save even more when you use our code, Change over to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. 
Anyway, all right, let's get back to tennis. So where did you start playing, um, Stacey? Where did you, where did you learn tennis? Uh, I started tennis in Vancouver, so when I was growing up. Honestly, just more as an act- after-school activity that my parents had signed my brother and myself up for. Again, kind of like just following my brother. Like, he would play tennis, and I would go play tennis. That sort of thing, very casual, maybe like two, three times a week. And then, obviously, as you progress, coaches are like, oh, look, you should sign up for tournaments. You should take private lessons. You should, you know, obviously trying to get you more involved in the sport. So it just kind of happened that way. But I was very lucky to have grown up playing many sports. Like, I played soccer. I tried figure skating. I played field hockey. So my parents never necessarily pushed one thing over the other and then just kind of naturally fed more into tennis and then started playing like provincial tournaments national tournaments and traveled a little bit like to the u.s and stuff um as a junior and then yeah just kind of were you always competitive or was it just for fun like in other sports too when you were when you played oh other sports yeah like i'd play like game like soccer like i was a part of like a like the girls league in vancouver and stuff mm-hmm. so it was it was competitive in a team but like for me that at a certain age once it got physical and like pushing and i was like yeah you know what this is not really for me uh you can stay on the other side of the net thank you very much uh so yeah so for me yeah tennis was kind of um yeah the the best option you know that reminds me of i watched i saw alvin kamar yesterday the running back for the saints he don't like getting dirty and he doesn't like getting dirty he doesn't like getting hit yeah <laughs> so that's why he said that that's partly why he's so good he doesn't want people to touch him mm-hmm. so he just doesn't mm-hmm. yeah that's funny um yeah. around what age did you know you want to play professionally um i think there were a few different times like i growing up as a junior it was definitely like brought into our heads that when we started training at like the national center in vancouver Mm -hmm. and so that was something that they you know wanted people to be have as a goal and not just limit yourself and so probably at the age of like 15 it was like hey this is a route that you can take if you work really hard and you put in the hours and you have a good work ethic and then i decided to go play college tennis and then it wasn't maybe again until my senior year because i stayed all four years that obviously my coaches were like okay is this going to be something that you continue is this are you going to try to find a job like what's kind of your next step and so that was obviously more of a decision um of am i really going to pursue tennis as a profession so it's never from yourself really the the thought the of deciding <laughs> no like it was it obviously sounds like it's always, someone sounds always like do you want to do this or not? <laughs> no i think it was just one of those things where like when i was younger like 15 i I wanted to play professionally, but I just, I just thought at that age, like, oh, you're so, I'm so young and maybe from Canada, it wasn't necessarily like the first route that you would take. Like, Mm. obviously, um, like playing college is a, is a big thing playing, uh, down in the U S and that was something that I did also want to do. That was a goal of mine. So for me, I didn't think that there was a gap in between the age of like 15 and 18 going to school where it would work. I mean, honestly, nowadays that is something that people do like you can develop at a young age, especially on like the, the woman's side. So I know a lot of girls that start playing professionally, like 15, 25s and then go to school and maybe only stay like the two years and then decide to go pro. Um, so if you went like hundred percent all in about going pro, what else were you thinking of doing with your life? After school or just in general? Just in general, no. Uh, definitely just staying chilling. in sport. Yeah, just, hang, just hanging out. Just, just doing podcasts. Just hanging around. Ma- matching sets. Yeah. Matching sets here and there. Fashion. <laughs> no, honestly. So I am very into fashion. And so uh, I think being a stylist is is really cool. And obviously, if like you can stay in the sports world, I know there's a lot of people that work with NFL or NBA players. Like Clearly, that's a, another like, lifestyle that they are really into. Um and uh just in in sports in general so like going to school that kind of is when things kind of started coming together and i made some connections within the pac-12 even though that's a bit up for grabs right now um but like like staying in the scene of tennis or just sports in general i think Hmm. yeah and then so what was like the decision to go to college Mm-hmm. Did you have other schools you were considering? Because you went to Washington, right? Mm-hmm. So I did. were you dead set on Washington and why Why Washington? No, it wasn't dead set. I did go on, I believe, four visits. Um, but the like the three schools that, were, that I was really interested in were Washington, ASU, and Oklahoma. Um, and it had nothing really to do with distance and stuff like that. It was just more a really good fit with the coach. She was also Canadian. Um, not that I like, knew her growing up or anything like that. 
but just felt very comfortable and like my visit was nice and obviously seattle's so similar to vancouver so for me it wasn't cold. a huge cold rainy wet yeah so it wasn't really like a big adjustment for me <laughs> you want to four more years of that i did i know i was like honestly i could have gone somewhere warm but this podcast already started crazy when she said she comes to the florida heat has been freezing every day it's so cold. Yeah. It's been so cold. It's like cold. no us canadians have been like practicing and like our shirts off we're like oh my god we're getting so tan right now it's like oh it's overcast but my dad literally said today is like what has it been always this cold like every december it's this cold in florida I was like yes yeah, it's cold. how much i mean it has rained Sorry. a little bit but how much did you improve in school over the four years uh a lot yeah, yeah. like I, I as a junior like i thought i was um a good player but definitely in school like my discipline got that much better on court okay mm -hmm. and then so in your senior year, was your results the reason why your coaches, like, did you start to do really well in school and that's why your coaches were pushing, like, kind of asking the question if you wanted to keep playing or, or like, was the results, like, aside, you know? I would say in my last two years, that's definitely when, like, things started to click more on the court. And so, obviously, for them, they wanted to help me pursue whatever I wanted to do, like, whether that was tennis or not. And so I honestly probably was being really indecisive. And so they would have, like, they would sit me down and say, like, hey, this is something that you want to do. Like, you do have to plan for it. It's not something that you can just graduate and then, okay, like, go off. Like, you can, but, like, they knew that wasn't, I wasn't going to be, like, setting myself up for success that way. Um, did so, they, yeah. Did they play professionally, your coaches, or no? Uh, my head coach did. Oh. So she played at Alabama and then played on tour for a little bit and then, unfortunately like went up for an overhead landed funny and it was just oh, yeah okay. well, that was that was that's that sad. that's all she wrote yeah that's like, no more no more overheads no <laughs> more overheads yeah but only if, swing volleys <laughs> so is do you, would you have any advice for someone like that like that's not really sure about playing i guess leading into college and then towards the end of college like would you be able to give any advice to those kind of people who are trying to make a decision whether to play or not professionally after school yeah. or just in general yeah i mean i definitely think you have to weigh out all of your options i don't think it's it's bad to like take your time on these things it's obviously it's a career it's something that you're really going to dive into and i think everyone here obviously knows it's it's expensive it's not something that you can just really dabble in or like that so when you do commit like you're committing to a lot so you want to be fully in so just make sure that you're really comfortable with your decision and feel like you can go into it with no regrets and that you're just giving it your best effort I think that's huge, right? No regrets. Because you don't want to feel pressure that, mm -hmm. you know, like you don't, you don't want to look back and say, oh, what if I did this? And what if I did that? Mm -hmm. You know, because like, I've been asked that question because I used to play another sport and they were asking me like up, up a month ago if I have regret, regrets on playing tennis and not that. And it's like, if you, if I had regrets, then I'd be a lot more unhappy now with, mm -hmm. with my career, you know, because then maybe you have expectations and you don't even know how good you would be at whatever else you decide to do, you know, so yeah. I agree. I feel like once you commit, then you can just be really happy and satisfied with your decision rather than like, what if or should I have? And then it's like, you're kind of just, I don't know, you're not really letting yourself reach your full potential. So what did that look like, that, that planning to go pro? Like, how did you figure out where you were going to train, what tournaments you were going to play, who was going to be your coach, those kind of things? How mm -hmm. did that look from, from school to making the transition to playing pro? Yeah, so I... When I first graduated, I did want to do a bit of a mix of like Vancouver, Seattle, just because obviously they're so close. I could drive down easily and How still far is it? like max three hours. Yeah. yeah. And so, so I would still be involved with like the program and the coaches. And then I would go home and sort something out up there. There's like a Tennis Canada Center. So I was going to reach out and see if the like how the coaches were doing and like just how involved that they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I kind of did that for maybe like three, four months before COVID hit. And so then I was almost forced to move back to Vancouver. But in hindsight, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise. And now you're based where? In Vancouver. Okay, so yeah. you went all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> blessing in disguise and went back to Vancouver. No, no, blessing in disguise with COVID that I had to move back to Vancouver because uh -huh. it just ended up working out well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then when it came to tournaments that you played, how did you kind of pick those starting out? Yeah, I Should mean, I, yeah. Like, like, did, yeah. did you have did you have points in school already, or did you have to build? Them? No, so that that was something with like I know a lot of players in the summer they'll go and play pro events, and for me, unfortunately, it'd be I'd play a long season and would somewhat be injured enough that I wouldn't really get to play in the summer, and so I never had a ranking while in school, and then I came out, 
And so obviously you're starting at the bottom. So I went to go play 15 Ks. And was Tunisia your first ones? First one back from COVID. Yeah, from so COVID. Bef- yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So before that, I did play. I played a few in Cancun. Oh, before so that. I think those were like my first ever tournaments. Cancun was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and yeah. then you fell in love with Cancun. And then I kept on going back, yes. Yeah. Did you run up in Cancun or what? Because like, he made a joke, I think, before about uh, yeah. Queen of Cancun or something. Do you win a lot of matches there? Or? A lot of <laughs> matches? <laughs> Or tournaments, tournaments. Or she tournaments. literally didn't lose the, lose the tournament. There's a picture of her when you walk into the. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I hope. Not anymore. There's not. Yeah, I've not heard anymore. some crazy things about what's been going on. They were building a statue there. before they closed too. Yeah. yeah. That's craziness. And yeah. then now, um, so playing slams now. You're excited to go to? I guess you start next week at um, United Cup or in, in a few weeks. United. Yeah. Cup, so right? that's the first tournament or team event, I guess, that yeah. I'm going to go play, which is in Sydney and. Yeah, very exciting. I've never really been a part of a, a team thing now since college. So So who's on your team? Who's Canada? Team Canada. Team Canada. So it's myself, Layla, Felix, Alexi, who I believe you guys all know as well. Has he been on the podcast? No. Oh, okay. Yet. And then we have a team captain, Adil. So, okay. Yeah, there's a five of us going. And then after United Cup is what? In Melbourne at Australian Open. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. So you go straight to that one. Big yeah. baller from Cancun to the Cancun. Yeah, to Melbourne Park. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Everyone's been through Cancun. You know, if you want to make your honestly, to I feel like it's you have. When to. you played there, you stayed on set. I stayed on site. How was the experience for you? A lot of people got sick. I heard a lot of lot of stories about. Yeah, I mean, knock on wood, I I never got sick there. No once. Not once. Do you have any stories from Cancun? This is arguably the the most exciting for people. They love the Cancun stories. They love the, yeah. I have story. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've I've watched and heard people's stories. Um, I mean, I feel like everyone knows. Like, there's scorpions. There's tarantulas. There's. I never seen a scorpion though. Oh my gosh! I had them everyone, in my room. Everyone knows that. Did you know? <laughs> Scorpion. Oh, you didn't say that. No, but I, I heard a. That's a scorpion. Yeah, that's a dog scorpion. Scorpion. I don't know. Um, yeah, like I remember showing up to a tournament and they didn't have balls for the yeah. week, so it standard. got delayed by three days. We didn't have balls for the week. No, like that's I'm standard. not kidding. So. <laughs> what do you mean? They didn't have that's balls. normal. No, I'm, scene. Like, it, that's normal. That's I've normal. seen. I've Were seen they play. I like, heard. I heard. I heard. Yeah. I've heard about like head to bubble out of the same week, but I've never heard about we just don't have balls. So I've experienced that in Cancun. I've also experienced four weeks, four different balls. I've experienced that too. In me too. People months of no prize money. <laughs> Yeah. I had an experience. I had to run down Sandra for my money, bro. Yeah, I think... Uh, Did you tell her Zell? Uh, Zell. You can't be doing Zell. At a certain point, you just say, okay, give me the pesos. But I had a flight that night, and I couldn't Oh, stay. they didn't have anything? Didn't have, uh, money on, didn't have money on set. They were waiting for the, for the man. The craziest one, I think, is... I think this girl's um, passport got stolen. Oh, so on like, site? Yeah, yeah, on site. Girl's passport got stolen, and all day <laughs> panicking. Panicking, 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 and she goes back towards the end of the day. And in the there? room and it's there. Oh, yeah. So you think someone? Yeah, put it back. I left some. I left. You left the speaker, left speaker. and my real string. I think you asked me to I go. Asked ask. you to go look for them, and they said they didn't have it. Yeah, I was, they didn't even look. They're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so good. You gotta love Cancun. Who Crazy. Did, who, did someone here tell a story about someone getting bit on the leg with a by a bug? Blue Baker. Blue Baker got bit. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was this. Yeah, yeah. And someone else told a story about. Uh, they're watching Champions League. The referees was watching Champions League. Oh, that so was... I have heard this before. <laughs> During yeah. the match? During yeah. the match. No, it was a match. I forget singles or doubles. And <laughs> they're playing and they're at the changeover. And someone just hears, like, cheering and, like, talking. And they're, they're just, like... someone. They thought someone's phone was on in their bag. So mm-hmm. everyone was, like, looking through a bag, nothing. And then the guy was like, yeah. And the changeover, he looks up. The guy has his phone right there watching <laughs> soft, like watching the Champions League game or whatever. I wonder how many like, bad calls were in that match. Man. Many. Yeah. Many. It is funny, too, though. Man. There was a few refs that have chaired my matches in Cancun that I then saw in Guadalajara, which is a WTA 1000. Mm-hmm. I was just like, hi again. <laughs> <laughs> because I think, yeah. I mean, I feel like people can get a little... Chir- like chirpy with the refs down there so were you there in cancun in the summer as well uh, like in the heat i have been before oh. i've definitely cramped there oh, yeah, yeah so because i was there and i had to i was qualifying i qualified two like pretty tough matches i went to the supervisor i was like please can i like our qualifiers playing two uh wednesday and he was like 
uh no why i was like i just had really two really tough matches like can i please on the same play? day i don't remember it could have been they played last round quality sometimes too much yeah the it could have been and then you play first round the day after yeah so i was like please can i play wednesday it was like well if you didn't want to play in the heat don't come to cancun <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, Carlos, you know Carlos? Yeah, I know. The Colombian one? No, like the older guy. The older man. I was like, okay, sorry. (laughs) You would have a magnifying glass, like literally looking over your prize money sheet. Like, oh my God, get those zeros correct. (laughs) (laughs) This is the fans of doubles when we played. That supervisor. The one who came onto court that day. You know Colombia? No, I I don't know where he's from. I don't think so. No, he's like French. He like takes pride that he can, yeah. Um, I don't know, but I just know that when Quali sign in, he talks <laughs> to everybody, so it takes a very long yes. time to Quali sign in. Yes. So besides the the horror stories of Cancun, how good was it for your career so far? Cancun. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it was a great stepping stone. Like. <laughs> It, the best thing to ever happen in my career. Oh, no, <laughs> it, it's honestly so sad that they canceled all this tri- or they got, I don't know what happened to them. Because you got to play a lot of matches in a row, isn't it? Well, or? yeah, like, in a sense, it was a great experience. Like, I played a ton of matches, and it's like you, I feel like when you are playing in conditions like that, it just makes you that much tougher. tougher and that's yeah. like, if you can go through that, honestly, you'll be able to play in any other location. Like, yeah. the courts, the balls, the refs, like, everything we said. <laughs> that's a great word. <laughs> that's a good perspective location? to have. I just thought it was funny, but you said that's a good perspective to have because, like, that is literally the roughest of the roughest. Yeah, so. you know, you get your rental car stolen. You know, yeah, you, you go, all you this go stuff, through everything. Like, there. <laughs> you do, and then you go anywhere else, and it seems so luxurious. Honestly, it's just like <laughs> you have hot water, and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Cancun versus Tunisia. Um, <laughs> I mean. Tunisia, but I like didn't have a good experience there, mm-hmm. so I don't know. If Did I'm you only go that one time? I went there the one time when like we were all there, and I ended up yeah just being like locked in my room yeah. <laughs> with COVID, so yeah, not not the best. But yeah, I think they need they need futures again on this side of the world. That's a place like Cancun mm-hmm. where like you can just go every week and just go. Maybe yeah. a little better though. Yeah. <laughs> According nice to Stacey, it's good hugs. to be in the grind, like. Build up your mental yeah. game. Yeah. What did uh Blue Baker said? Your your callus. That's yeah. what you call it. Your callus. <laughs> yeah, get callus, get yeah. tougher. Yeah. All right. So, um, talk to us about your recovery. So, what was it like recovering in Cancun in those in those conditions? Do you have special routines and that sort of stuff? If you go or? to the gym in Cancun, uh huh. What gym? Maybe at, they Stacey have a, had a bed there. At or any time, <laughs> any time of the day, you would see her in there foam rolling doing some sort of yoga or something <laughs> some like, activations why are you like, saying like, that it's a bad thing why no. is this a bad thing but it's, but what else is there to do <laughs> no, <laughs> i guess i guess not that. <laughs> but like even in dominican Coming i saw from you especially no i split it no but this is excessive like <laughs> If excessive, she practices at, if why did it turn into you're too, <laughs> you're too recovered. Why is this? I'm too fresh. Legs are too fresh. <laughs> so you're going to have too much energy for the match. <laughs> no. I feel like if I've seen her in Santo Domingo as well, I think probably she had, let's say she's warming up at 10, you would see her like doing all sorts of activation at like 9.05 until maybe 10 o'clock. Spent, maybe if you spent more time in the gym like Stacey, you'd have back-to-back titles. In, in you're right. You're right. Maybe I need to do some more foam roller. <laughs> Yeah. What's in your in your bag? What do you travel with for recovery? Okay, honestly, it's it's kind of funny. I do travel with like quite a bit like fitness equipment now. Okay. Um, <laughs> maybe that comes out of like paranoia. Okay. Even like from Cancun, because places like that, like you never know what the gym setup's gonna be. Like it could just be a few mats. Or you could have weights. You could have mm-hmm. like I. You never so you know. travel with weights. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <went. laughs> no, I don't travel with weights, but I do like travel with like a two pound like sand like ball. Like so yes, yeah, so very travel light. With well, it's a very, <laughs> two pounds very out. two pounds. Like, um, but it's great for like warm ups and stuff. You know, just like tossed around like serves and stuff like that. But I do travel with like a few different like bands in case you want to do like some resistance stuff. Um, obviously the foam roller, the ball, <laughs> the lacrosse ball. I now have like the rolly stick, um, the peanut, uh-huh. <laughs> the massage gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, I don't know. Just like how much time a day do you spend? Like warming up that? and cooling down, a lot. Like, like if you yeah, practice yeah, twice in a day, it. let's say you train at ten and two, will you do a full warm up and a full cool down? Full warm, full cool down. 
I would try to, yes, if I had the time. Like, it depends. Like, if I need to, like, rush to get lunch or, like, if it's far, like, if I'm staying far from the courts or something. But, yeah. I can you can to. you rush us through a routine like a warm, a warm routine? up? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite thing to do. I was waiting for this question. <laughs> um, no, honestly, I always start with a good roll, like <laughs> a good roll. Like, I just don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> you really like, foam roller. Like, Foam roller okay. and ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. And ball. <laughs> yeah, at the same time. I honestly or... know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like doing name. three different po- body parts with it's one, like with one. Like, <laughs> like, I wow, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish. I honestly wish. What's a good roll like? Okay, honestly, this is gonna sound so OCD, but like I literally just like start from like the bottom up. Like mm-hmm. I'll start like rolling my feet, then the calves, then like quads, move up, whatever. I do like a few little stretches just to feel. Nimble. Loose, limber, yeah, like, I don't know, maybe you don't sleep well one night, like, I just don't know, <laughs> you just never know what's gonna hit you, and so I do that, and then I get into, like, activating. <laughs> and what are we activating? We start from the from the bottom up again? We're <laughs> no, laughing, and this is no. a no, it's professional, great. this is being no. professional. We're learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so then I, just, <laughs> and then I activate, but then I, like, <laughs> I don't know why this sounds like such a foreign concept, but it's like, it's just like a core glute shoulder thing. Okay. And I think for me, like, yes, I'm ticking it off, like my to-do list for the day, but it gives me that like sense of like, okay, every day I'm doing something small. So it's like, it's maintenance, but it's like when you're on the road, like we all know you can never really get a good workout and like, it's, it's hard to schedule fitness on the road. At least that's what I struggled with a lot at the beginning is I'd go on the road and I'd come back and I would just feel very match fit but not necessarily like quick or sharp or fast or strong and so like doing these little things for me at least personally like it, it just helps give me that like peace of mind but also like i do think it, it really does help just maintenance and like technique and keeping everything like together so yeah just like a little core thing little activation glutes yeah. and shoulders okay and then you yeah. play and then the session and then you warm done. or you have to do the dynamic now that's the that's... warm up to the warm up yeah, no, that's like literally like a morning thing i thought thing. once you're activated you're good to go so now you have more to go yeah so like after, that, that's like something activated. i'll do in the morning so like whether i'm hitting at like 10 and i'm doing that at nine or if i'm hitting at one like and i wake up like i'll just do it just to be like okay i did it and like i'm gonna feel good and you the thing is like also you just feel good like you you feel accomplished and you're like okay my body's like ready like and then you can kind of gauge like how am i feeling am i more sore today do i have to make adjustments in my practice like Mm -hmm. should i go later in practice should i go like more in the gym do i need to like stretch more later today like i don't know (laughs) (laughs) and then probably yes probably yes (laughs) but then and then before you hit um yeah like uh another another (laughs) (laughs) a good a great (laughs) role No, but then I get into more like obviously like, dynamic stuff and like mm, on court. Obviously, obviously. Have to, yeah. yeah. So then, yeah, you know, run around, little arm swings, leg swings. <laughs> Good to go. Shuffles. Kay. Okay, <laughs> so now that's that's before practice. Practice is done. Cool now. down. What are we doing? Cool down, yeah. Cool, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, just like another like good stretch. Like if I'm hitting again later that day, like I won't I won't go extreme. Like I'll just I'll just stretch to make sure like if I'm sitting around for the next few hours that like I don't feel stiff, but um what about end of day end of day i do like to kind of do a similar like roll full <laughs> body uh-huh. roll so it's a similar the roll and a similar yeah the first but honestly and last it's like it's like soothing like I, I don't find it a chore i think maybe at the beginning i was like wow this takes a lot longer than i was expecting but now it's it's i don't know like i can i can take like a routine yeah it's like i think at the beginning i was always on my phone having to do something because i'm like i need to distract myself like this is so boring like i don't want to be doing this because it is hard. It's uncomfortable, especially when maybe you're not as flexible as that you'd hope to be mm-hmm. or as mobile. And then you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, Can I you go home now? Will you this? roll again? She probably already <laughs> did it. No, she probably already did it. <laughs> yeah, I did my, my pre-activation yeah. before this. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but then you kind of, you see the progression and it's mm. it's nice and then it becomes easier. And like I can I can easily roll stretch for like 45 minutes and I'll be on my phone and just kind of like, I don't know, just maybe helps just is it, mind is it like bit. one of those things where you know they say like you should make your bed in the morning because it like starts the day off like, on a good yeah. note kind of yeah that's definitely kind of how i start to look at it yeah. because i would kind of start it like at any point of day like say for example it's hitting at two o'clock i would do it at one but if you just do it first thing in the morning it's just 
yeah you kind of start like your check, day off right yeah, start your day off right <laughs> when i i want it to sound like an insult or anything but like when i, I that's really a bad way to start the <laughs> sentence <laughs> <laughs> he's already hating, <laughs> really hating on recovery what nice what nice no because when you speak it sounds like a lot of the things that you attribute to success have to do with discipline mm-hmm. and when i watch you play I haven't seen you play that much, but from what I can tell, it seems like your biggest strength might be your mentality, like the way you compete. So I was wondering, because I also saw, I don't know, you've been posting recently a lot of your fitness and uh, the recovery stuff at night, the, I don't know if it's a cold pool or hot mm-hmm. pool or whatever. What, first of all, do you agree with that statement that I just made, that your mentality might be your biggest strength? And then secondly, do you spend time focusing on your mental, I guess, the aspect of the game? Maybe are you meditating? Are you doing, I don't know, the cold plunges and stuff, try to be uncomfortable? Like, how do you train your mentality? Mm-hmm. I think that is something that I learned in college. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because in college, we would do a lot more. We would take these kind of like questionnaires and you could kind of see your in competition versus natural state. And so that's when I did realize that my like everyday personality is has a big contrast to my encore um, in the sense of like, yeah, I'm super disciplined. I like to have routines. I like to be analytical. Like if you can show me numbers, like I'll take it. Like I want to know everything versus when I'm just hanging out. Like I couldn't care less. Like I won't have a to-do list. Like I'm like, it's just more relaxed. Um, but that's something that I did learn in college and realized like, this is how I know I can be successful. So I just, that's something that's just like stuck with me. And then, yeah, like being uncomfortable, I think it's, it's great to always challenge yourself. So I have been going to this like ice bath sauna and you cycle through. So like typically you'd go in. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Get out. <laughs> Get out. And that's the end of the show. <laughs> no, respect. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> I Buy knew I should have put on Do You Undisturbed. <laughs> Buy some clothes, Black. She can match yeah. stuff. That's what's going on. on Do Not Disturb. Um... Cold plunge. Sauna, yeah, so yeah. cold plunge. And so you would, what they try to recommend, you obviously start slower. And so maybe you start like the first cycle as a minute and then you go into the sauna. It's a nice, it's a nice location. And so then you can just go chill out by the fire, just like relax. And then maybe you go in again for two minutes and then you go back sauna, cycle through two, three times, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then it obviously, I mean, it has so many benefits, but then also it's like, yeah, getting into a freezing cold bath is not something that you want to be doing but you obviously know the benefits of it afterwards and once you're in it you realize like wow you're a lot stronger than you think you really are um so yeah it's just nice to be able to challenge yourself in other ways that's hard to do on the road though like the ice baths Mm -hmm. and stuff ice is expensive i bought three bags yesterday ten dollars i can't imagine doing that did you try to make your own ice bath yeah i did one Uh, yesterday but like three bags i feel like was just enough like i probably would do more bags but like i can't pay more than ten dollars more for ice. Times. <laughs> <laughs> just for frozen water <laughs> frozen water that's what i'm saying in canada it's like it's easier you know but so like yes but do you do anything specific i don't know you journal oh do you yeah meditate? that's what do you, you said so in read s- books I don't know. yeah so in school yeah so that was a big thing we had us like a sports performance guy that would come in and speak with us and we do a lot of like guided meditations which for me was a lot easier than just sitting by myself but it is hard like at the beginning i thought we were gonna be sitting there for half an hour just like being zen or something but it <laughs> just, but it, it, it really is like you start out like one two minutes and it's like it, you just wanted like the quality of it and so it really wouldn't be something that it was a quality over quantity and then obviously you can build up from that and like i think max we'd be doing would be like 15 minutes and that's on like a very good day um now i don't necessarily do that as much probably maybe should maybe i'll look back into it Mm. but i i got into journaling which for me i like doing that again it's kind of like something that i would do in the morning or the evening just like once a day and again it, it is hard like at the beginning i was like am i supposed to be writing pages but it's very personal you know it's like you can write two sentences if you want you can write I don't know, like a whole, like, your I whole find, day. I find the journaling challenging because, like, I, we spoke with a doubles player, Rob Galloway, and he said that he would write match scripts 
for mm. every single match that he wrote and that sort of stuff and he would write different situations that could arise mm. in the match yeah. and it was very repetitive so when you journal how repetitive is it do you find it to be very repetitive or is every day different for me every day is different i also like my journal is not just like tennis specific like it's very like just how i'm feeling in the day like if you know if you're like a diary kind of yeah just like hey like i i didn't feel great today but like i put really good effort in so like that's something that you should be proud of um obviously like tennis things like if i went to a practice and felt like something was clicking i'll like okay these are like key things that i think will help like remind me how this felt or what i should be doing and then yeah match stuff i don't necessarily write down because i mean a lot of the times it's like you maybe don't know your opponent you're mm -hmm. like watching like a five minute youtube video thing and you're like okay cool she's righty <laughs> and then like there's not much you can find and then yeah like again like just writing like i for me i always try to like write a few things like i'm grateful for just so it's like at the end of the day you can be like okay like maybe stuff might not be going the way that you want right now but there's a lot of things in your life that are going right is that how you survive Cancun? That's by how being I survive. Grateful? <laughs> I w kid you not. I remember being in Cancun and be like, I'm grateful for water. Like I'm grateful yeah. for like, <laughs> the sun. That. It's just. Um, do you reread? Do you reread like previous journals at all? So the funny thing is, I actually just fully finished my first journal. I would always was someone that I would start. I'd buy a new journal. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be the one. And then like, I don't know, 10, 20 pages in, I'd be like. Like, this is really hard. Mm. And so I finished my first journal. I've, I haven't reread it. I would love to. It kind of recaps this whole year. I believe I started in Dominican. Okay. Uh, I got it then, like, like for my birthday. And so I started it in Dominican and finished it maybe last month. Um, so it would be interesting because I did write, like, after specific terms, like, how I felt, like, whether it went super well. Like, okay, like, what was I doing this week that, that made it a successful week or, or opposite? Like, okay, like, I lost first round. Like, what... What can I improve and learn from this? So definitely something I'm going to have to look into. And then you did bring up books. A book that I have read recently is called The Four Agreements that I would highly recommend. And it's it's not long at all. It's maybe like 100 pages or so. Um, perfect. Right. Right. Perfect. Right. perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's not – it's like you can just kind of read like five pages a day. And for me, it was just something like every, every day I'd like read it. I'd be like, okay, I feel – it's more about perspective, I would say just in life and how you view things and talking about your mentality are, how would you describe the way you approach tennis are you very result oriented do you focus on like a process trying to improve like how do you like this year coming up how are you mm -hmm. approaching it um process so this past year was all about process obviously it's hard because at the end of the day there is like a target number that everyone wants to hit but it is just trusting that you can get from point a to point b it's not necessarily going to be always going this way but i think the thing is like you need sometimes the downs to go up because yeah i need to rethink that let me just restart that whole thing <laughs> 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 okay evan mark the time mark the time <laughs> i was like do you need downs <laughs> I'm like, no one actually wants to go down. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it, it is true. Like, you do want to be process oriented. Like, um, but it sounds like that's what you are with the, like, how much you, like, the journaling, the sounds recovery. Sounds very diligent. Foam yeah, rolling yeah, and stuff. Sick word, diligent. Yeah. Well, I think I if, you can, if you can control things and you know, like, okay, if I do this, like, at least I know I have that covered things that do come up that aren't in your control, like getting sometimes getting injured, you know, you never know if you're just going to tweak something and next thing you know, you're out for, for three months or like you go to a location and it's maybe you don't know many players and it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm practicing an hour a day just because at least for me, like I've gone to some places. I'm like, I don't know anyone. And I feel like my quality of practice is just like, it's so much less than when I'm at home. And then you feel like uncomfortable going into a tournament being like, oh my gosh, like I don't feel prepared. Mm -hmm. And so if you can like take care of other other things then it can kind of give you a confidence coming from somewhere else yeah how good are you at remaining in the process when i don't know it's a stressful situation so when let's say i don't know mm -hmm. huh in the, in the downs, downs. no not the even down. the downs like it could be <laughs> a up it could be like i don't know maybe your first 25k final i guess i'm assuming the points are different between winning and coming second or mm -hmm. you're starting to be higher ranked and now you're playing some girl 700 and it's in a bigger tournament you're supposed to win like how easy is it for you to remain focused on i don't know 
what you're working on or what your, what your, whatever your cues are in a match? Is it easy for you to say, forget the result, I'm just going to do this, and if I win, I win, if I lose, I lose? Or do you struggle with, I don't know, thinking about what you want to achieve and, I guess, the task at hand? It definitely push and pull. Like, I definitely did struggle with that this year because – something like now at some tournaments I, I would be the seated player and it's it's never comfortable like first rounds are never comfortable I don't think for anyone and so obviously there's an expectation when you see a number beside your name or or who you're playing against and like there there are shoulds and you know sometimes people will look ahead in the draw like for me I, I personally don't like looking at draws just because I I don't want to overthink things like at the end of the day like it is really match by match um but yeah, I think. Um, you lose it or? I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. You lost the you, process you just like, now. You, <laughs> you lost the process. Just, I lost the process. No, you said something about. Um, what did I say? I don't know. <laughs> you went on. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, Wait, is it weird if I interrupt so I can remember what I want to say? As he was asking the question, I was thinking, this man is good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not good enough. She, no, she got lost. No, because uh, I wanted to bounce around, but just like being disciplined, even when yeah. So there's how, more how, expectation yeah. and difficult, like yeah. Well, I think tennis is so interesting in that sense of. You never really have enough time. Like, say you, so you say you do win a tournament or you go far. Like, you don't really have time to celebrate that because next thing you know, in two days, you're playing first round again, and like you're back at square one. Like, you're only really as good as your, like your last match, which is a sad reality, but it is true. And so for me, I've noticed a pattern actually, which I'm trying to work on, is I'll, I'll play a tournament and, and do very well, and the next week, I, I, it's it's never very successful. And I don't know if that's like physically or just mentally or Can be physically. or what what it is you but it's be cannot be physical. got to be fit <laughs> but i guess more of my question was more about uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer but i was trying but to what get, i'm really asking is <laughs> <laughs> what i really want to know is okay you're the three seed okay you play some young girl who's actually good okay but she's a thousand okay the match starts and you know you're supposed to win this match. Mm -hmm. So as you're playing, maybe it starts a little bit closer than you would like it to be. You're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. How well do you cope with that situation? Are you able to focus on whatever your plan was before the match or whatever cues you have? Mm -hmm. Am I taking too long? No. no. <laughs> okay. He needs help. He wants he, to learn. Okay. No, Understood. but I'm just trying to get the perspective from people. So yeah. how, how well do you deal with the situation? And how... Let's say you come out of the process. What do you do to get back into it? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I almost try to trick myself. Like, I, I would, I, like, if I'm playing someone who's maybe a young, up and coming junior, obviously very talented, but just don't have, doesn't have a ranking. Like at the end of the day, I'm like, this girl's gonna win points. She's gonna come up big. She can, she can swing freely, and I have to accept that and know that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if you're prepared for it, then it's almost not as much as a shock that if you're going into it being like oh, well, she's 16 or like, oh, like the ranking or like she's played three tournaments this year or whatever it may be. And just going in being like, no, this is going to be an absolute battle. Like there's a very good, like this is a 50-50 match. Like you almost have to trick yourself into being like, I, not that you shouldn't win the match, like you, sh you should go in confident, but like it's not going to be easy and it's never going to be easy. And so we talk a lot about like practice mindset versus performance mindset. Mm -hmm. So how different does the process look in a match versus in practice? Like, are you going into a match, let's say you're working on your back and on the line, mm -hmm. are you going into a match thinking, whenever I see this opportunity, I'm gonna go for it? Or are you still trying to do what you're more comfortable doing? But I don't know if I that's the right question. way to ask that question. Or ask it Because I way. feel like, if this is, let's say this is a tactical play that I want to do, my back and on the line mm -hmm. is a tactical play, hypothetically speaking, because we all, anyway. So, <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> And in practice, my practice mindset is I'm, I'm working on this shot, whatever. In the match, you don't want to be thinking to... Oh, here's my chance. and like Exactly. You know, yeah. like you kind of need to let go of that process and That's go the with like I'm instinct. Asking. But yeah. it's, it's not about like... I guess what, what I understood from your question is if to go with your natural instinct, which was for me, I wouldn't go for that shot in the, in the past. You know, I would maybe slice or I would avoid 
this play or something. It's more about deciding that this is the play you're going to, to do, you know, regardless. Like, it's not about changing. So, like, the question is, should be more to, like, is it easy for you to let go of the practice mentality of working on something or improving? I don't know. Let's say that is that backhand on the line and you can just go into that flow state where you're not really thinking. You can just execute and just play, like, naturally. Like, do you ever yeah. slip back into a different mindset or do you not think about that stuff at all? Well, I think that comes over time. What I've realized is... Yeah, great question. Um, <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally got a good one. <laughs> Wait, before I lose it. Um, <laughs> I think it comes over time and I think it comes being in those pressure situations, which are tournament plays. Like, it is very hard to replicate a true match situation and feeling that same sort of pressure with something on the line. And so the more you can go into a match and actually commit and swing and do it over and over, whether you're making it or not, it's like long-term, it's going to be beneficial. Um, but that is something that you really just have to swallow and be like, okay, I may go out there lose this match, but I could get better. Like, it's not something that you want to hear. Like you would love to be able to go out there and be like, okay, I'm going to do it and it, I'm going to execute and it's, gonna go great but there's the reality of it doesn't that's exactly what well not exactly but very similar to what blaze said i don't know maybe amy i don't know if you've seen that episode but blaze big now said probably not he was <laughs> <laughs> amy don't watch our stuff no i love it <laughs> no, what blaze say he said <laughs> <laughs> no but blaze said that he always knew that i mean he has a good kick serve on the ad side kick out wide inside and forehand but he really found the shot on a, I think it was the a medal match, like for CAC, CAC medal match. Um, it was either down match point, maybe it was match point I think for it him. was nine, eight in the tie break up. Yeah, nine and up. Because he was down in the tie break, like, no, it must have been 10, nine or something. It was, because he was down like nine, four, whatever. But he hits a kick out wide inside in forehand. And then that's when he was like, I have this shot every time now. Like, and and it, whether he has it or not, he believes he has it, you know? So now he doesn't have mm -hmm. to think about anything, but he just does it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it sounds very similar. Like you kind of have to put yourself in that position, be willing to miss. And then, I mean, hopefully it goes in and then you have more mm -hmm. belief. I guess that's the question. Are you willing <laughs> to try stuff? And, and I am willing to try things. <laughs> and if it goes wrong, I will accept it. Okay. <laughs> No, but because <laughs> I'm not hearing the answer. I feel like I've been like five different answers for one question. I still haven't nailed it. I don't know what else what? I can do. She's gone at it from answer, every you single like? angle. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out: Do you balance it or not in your head? Like balance it. Okay, so I'll just throw out something else that might be useful. I'm not Thank sure. You. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if this one answers we'll still, it. We'll see if this helps in any sense. But like practicing. I think there is a mindset, uh, like, obviously it's easier to make a mistake and let go, right? But in practicing, it's like, you, I think you can be thinking about the technical and the like, okay, I want it to go. And like, not that you're overthinking, but you're allowed to like process things and be like, okay, I'm making a lot of decisions versus when you get into a match, you should almost just go on autopilot and be like, I know what I have. And this is what I'm like, what's going to come out today. You know, there's no like, oh, like, should I maybe try to get my racket under the ball more? Like, th there's none of that. Like, it's, you know what you have, and that's what you're going to use. Have you ever slipped into that mentality? During matches? Match? Yeah. yeah, like, for sure. If something's going wrong, the first thing you could think of is, like, oh, my technique, this, my technique, that, oh, something that I've been working on. Uh, and you can get so caught up, but it's almost like you just have to go back and be, like, like, like muscle memory. It's like, okay, I've done this a thousand times. Like, I just need just to trust like myself. Just, faith, have faith that you've done the work already and just exactly. go and do it. Yeah. Like, you know you can do it, and it's just, like, these external things that are making your body, like, more tense or however you feel. And it's just like, okay, if, if this was a practice match or just practice in general, it's like, you know you can make that, like, eight out of ten times. So it's like, why, why can't I do it now? Do you have any cues or anything that for you to go back? Or do you, is it more like, is it breathing? Is it? a certain performance cue like a thought or something like if you ever get into that kind of mindset how to get back um breathing for sure that definitely calms me down and just kind of takes me to a zone of like okay like don't overthink it and just just play the ball um and one thing that i remember like repeating my to myself a lot this year was just like everything you want is like on the other side of fear you know so it's like anything that's like makes you scared and anxious is because you want it so much and like you know it's going to be difficult to overcome but like that's when the good stuff happens that's a clip <laughs> does that answer that. your question that's a clip does that right answer there. your question 
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> Should we answer? Just cut everything else out. <laughs> <laughs> Should we answer some fan questions? Let's go with first question from Instagram. What's your craziest match experience on the Pro Tour? Okay, yeah. I was actually saving this one when you brought up Cancun. Um, match experience. It was, again, this, this was back before I was super detail-oriented. And I remember playing a match in Cancun. And it was towards the end. I believe it might have been like 5-4, 5-3 in the second set. And... I was just breaking through strings left and right. And it was just an absolute disaster. I was freaking out. And I remember I was on my last racket. And again, like I didn't know that you could send off rackets to a stringer mid-match. So I was just <laughs> sitting with like broken... How old were you? Like in my 20s. <laughs> 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 just naive. <laughs> yeah. oh, man. It's like, please don't break. Please don't break. No, just like, just like, like, I, no I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, I was looking at the girls' match beside me. I'm like, am I comfortable enough to ask this girl for her racket? Like, if I break another string. Like, you better be. I was just like, I was going to be like, girl, like, I am so sorry. But <laughs> like, I'm going to have to, like, sneak into your bag really quick. <laughs> How hard is your forehand? Jeez. No, Very like, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know what it was. If it was, like, the, the humidity or I don't know what was going on. But I, I was freaking out. I felt like I couldn't hit the ball. I was just, like, so anxious. And then, yeah, anyways... So I'm, I'm playing. Next thing you know, um, what, someone else, Tanner Smith, who you guys know, is, was at the tournament as well. And he just comes, like, lugging in with, like, a sandwich and just, like, sits down. And I'm, like, kind of, like, freaking out. I'm just, like, <laughs> I might, I, like, and I'm, like, trying to talk to him. He's, like, what is going on? Next thing you know, I break <gasps> the string, my last racket. And I was just, like, what <gasps> do I do? I, I look at Tanner, and I'm just, like, I need a racket now. And he's just, like, what? I'm, like, I don't have a racket. Like, I don't know what to do. And so I was like, please, 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 like, go get a racket for me. Because he also used Yonix, but obviously it's, like, going to be a lot heavier. Grip is going to be a lot bigger. But I was just like, I need a racket. I'm so sorry. He goes running up to his room. Luckily, he was staying on site as well. So he had his bag and everything there. What's the score? Like, 5-3 in the second set. You were like, up. I'm, I'm up, and yeah. I'm up 5-3. Seven? Um... You don't remember. Don't even know. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I, remember, I was returning. Oh. I was returning. <laughs> so I, thought no, be no, I, actually, I was returning. I was returning. And so I obviously go to the, the umpire. And again, like, I knew it was going to be tough with, like, he, he wasn't going to know what was going on. So it's just like, I don't have any more rackets. I'm waiting for my friend. Like, he's getting his. So we just need to, like, put some pause for a second. And I remember the girl's mom was, was there watching. And she was like, like, this can't happen. Like, you have to play. And I was just like. Uh, broken string clear the broken like, string like, <laughs> and they were just but then i learning experience i find out i find out that you have a 10 minute like equipment malfunction is that a real thing That's i didn't know about thing. that we're all learning today we're all learning that. today i knew there was like a equipment malfunction time yeah like if you break your laces and you have to also this was in cancun like so that he could have just been making things up, so I'm not actually ten, sure. ten minute break. Yeah. And anyways, yeah, so anyways, I got this, like, malfunction break, and I was just waiting, and I was freaking out, and then, like, Tanner comes with, I think he gave me two rackets, because he was just like, I don't know what's going on. And I'm just there, and I just remember, like, chipping returns. And I was like, I have the ball, like, trying to, like, feel his tension, like, everything. And I'm just, like, chipping returns, like, probably just trying to hit, like, slow and heavy and just make balls. Slow and heavy. Like, does that even make sense? No. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, that was, that was slow. <laughs> like, that was the mindset. I was so flustered. And I did manage to win with his racket. And I think, like, he thought it was funny. Because at the time, like, yeah, I can, like, it was. Uh, looking back, it is funny. Are the girl broke down? Or? I literally am like, thank you so much. And then tears. Tears, tears, tears. I was like, I'm trying to play professional tennis. I don't even have enough rackets to play the magic. I, I, that's when I was like, okay, like, this cannot ever happen again. But no one thought of telling you? The referee, Tana, no one thought of telling you you can just drop off a racket. No, Tanner probably Tanner didn't just, know. Tanner just came on. by and, like, I, you know, I was just playing a match. You know, like, <laughs> didn't, didn't think twice about it. And then, yeah, next thing you know, I have no rackets. Again, like, okay. Also, I don't think that the stringer actually, like, strung my racket in the morning. I definitely put rackets in, and he's like, oh, like, I'll, I'll drop it off, and, like, never dropped off my rackets at the match. You so never asked for the racket? No, like, he said he was going to bring it, and then, like, never brought it. I know, but you didn't ask the referee to check? No, like, they kept on just saying, like, ah, 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 and then I'm like, ah, 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 
That's what I'm saying. I could have like whipped Get something out. Like, <laughs> yeah, you have ten, ten minutes of string. I'm <laughs> such a lie. I don't know how to string. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you ever feel like your improvement was slowing down, and how did you get past it? Um, yeah, I think when it came to that, it was more with like my body. Like I, I would start feeling um, some pain, some injuries, and I tried to work through it. I think sometimes that is kind of more of like a college mindset of like, oh, like you can work through it, like keep pushing, and I kind of it's like oh still, your leg's broken oh just like, go like, no <laughs> just, <foam roll. laughs> well, just tape it up and play it all started. <laughs> and so once i realized like your health is really everything then i definitely started to prioritize taking time off and like recovering and resting and realizing that will take you further with your game so how many speaking to like time off and stuff how many tournaments do you anticipate you'll try to play this year do you have any any idea um and has your schedule kind of changed now? Because you've played mostly futures and stuff in the past, and then now you're ranking yeah. as it gets higher. Relatively, I know it is different between the men's and women's tour because the ITF obviously hosts a lot more tournaments uh, than like you guys have two, like fifteen twenty fives for ITF events. Ours goes up to hundred yeah. Ks. It goes like so fifteen twenty five sixty. Yeah, they're actually changing 60, it. 80, 100, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah. So or forty. It, no. <laughs> just all the numbers no, no, you want to google it take a break quick <laughs> no, it's okay no yeah there so there's just a lot more itf events so i'll definitely still be playing itfs but definitely we'll be able to like play a little bit more of like the wta tour which is nice sick um so yeah i'm excited about that for this year nice how many did you play this year I mean, wta tournaments. events no just tournaments in general oh um i believe around 20 to 23 oh so That's not light not, right not crazy but you were injured for a while. It wasn't crazy, right but I did have some some periods of time where I did have to take some weeks off. So I was at home, but so I honestly kind of got to use those as training blocks. Like I would take time off to recover and rehab, and then I could do a good week at home with my trainer and coaches. You won thirty four matches this year. That's a lot. Very good. Thirty four <laughs> and eighteen. So I can't really tell. <laughs> I can't tell how many you played. But yeah, it's twenty sounds about right. You can't add that together. No, no, no. You just see the, the, it's the total, not yeah. the tournament. It says thirty four and eighteen. It doesn't say how many tournaments she's played. Uh, so tournaments. She won. Okay, okay. Act like you've been here. Oh, how many, how many did you win? Act like you've been here before. Three. So eighteen plus three. So next question. <laughs> 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 if you could play tennis versus any historical figure, who would that be? Um, I did do some Googling, but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie now. Um, but I, uh, I think it would be cool to play against Princess Diana. I know there are honestly some really iconic photos of her in... Sorry, did you want like a tennis player? <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with her. It says it says historical figure, not tennis. Well, tennis I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. I can even. Great let answer, Stacy. No, great answer. Thank you. Know. <laughs> that is so out out of the box. I didn't see that comment. She said Princess Diana. But wasn't there a picture of her recently playing tennis at like Wimbledon or something? <laughs> yeah. Let me go and look. Pete let me go and look. Recently. She yeah, I'm dead wrong. Very much passed me in a tragic car accident. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I saw. That is not what I saw. Who um, asked this question? Let me come back to this question. <laughs> we started over again? No, I can't say that over? answer now with a straight face. <laughs> no, do you have a different answer? Say like I Chris, can't. Say Chris Evans or something. <laughs> <laughs> say Serena, I don't know. Amy, who's your answer? George Washington. <laughs> straight to like world history i don't know no it wasn't specific oh. is it anyone in tennis it's just historical it if you could play tennis versus and his, and his it doesn't say tennis historic player. historical figure yeah. napoleon <laughs> yeah that would have been sick <laughs> no but honestly she had she was very she was very athletic into, very athletic very into fashion like she, she kind of brought the whole streetwear thing with She's you know you. the athleisure i think she was honestly one of the first people to wear athleisure she has uh, iconic looks with like the, you know like the sneakers the high socks the shorts oversized sweater sort of look so okay 
Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for my reaction. That was bad. No, all good. <laughs> well, do we have anything else to cover, people? Anything else? Is there anything else you wanted to discuss today, Stacy? Mm. Amy, what you got? Anything know. else? Stacy, thank you for coming on. Um, Pro Stringer, everyone, if you have not gotten a Pro Stringer, you can get a hundred dollars off. Um, on the in the gift shop in the Pro Stringer when checking out, I think it costs around nine nine hundred fifty. You can get a hundred dollars off. And also, we have some merch um, selling now. We have hoodies, t-shirts, sweaters. So the the link will be below in the link tree. Feel free to to support um, everything. From this, will go towards editing, so that'll help us to continue to to bring content out to you guys. And also, it'll be huge if you can like and subscribe to our YouTube and our Instagram and all of our social media. So, Stacy, thank you for coming. We enjoyed it, and good luck this season. Thank you so much. Good luck down under. Thank you.